Today we are down in Nottingham, well Derby actually. Uh, we have spent some of the morning in Nottingham and we are now sitting in this lovely little cafe in Derby. Here with Jonathan Iwanu and we are having a chat with him today about his property journey so far. So Jonathan is pretty young but doing phenomenal things in the property world. He's been investing for a couple of years but property is really in his blood through his degree in architecture and as well as being on the PIN or the Simon Zucchi Mastermind program, he is growing his own portfolio in Nottingham alongside having a full-time job. So really impressive stuff and just wanted to share a little bit of his story. Now obviously if you're watching this you'll know that this isn't a typical interview. We are recording some of our day as well and we have spent the morning looking around some of his properties. So if you are listening to the podcast head over to YouTube, watch the video and you'll get to see some behind the scenes shots of his projects before they have started, ones that are in progress and also some of his finished work. But Jonathan, that's enough of an introduction. First of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. What have I missed there in the introduction? Take us back to the start. And that was a good introduction, Mark. Really <laughs> on the fly, one. it worked yeah, out okay. It was really good. Yeah. Um, so I, I grew up uh, in Standard House, uh, split sort of parents and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I've always been interested in property from, I, th I think it was about sort of 16 when I really got properly interested and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to go for something that was a bit different, a bit more out there, and that's where I looked at architecture. But the goal was to always get into property. So Jonathan, this is the first house that we are at today on the grand property tour of your little empire. Tell us about this one, why did you buy it? Tell us the figures about it. Okay, uh, so this one's in the Meadows in Nottingham. I paid £100,000 for it. Uh, it should be worth between 170 and 180 when done up. Uh, it'll cash flow me about 1200 to £1,500. It's a six bed, uh, two bathroom, one ensuite property, uh, mid-terrace Victorian one. They're, they're few and far between now, but what's interesting about it is because it's got Article 4, it's hard to come by something that has yeah. something with C4 already on. Yeah. Most of the time you don't have C4 and you have to apply for that anyway, so it's an absolute nightmare. I wanted to get something on the room for 2020. Yeah. Got like 92 pretty much. I've got a single there as well, so it's kind of one. Um, so got like 92 just that are in the process of being done or in, in progression yeah. at the minute, so I'm going to have to kind of relook at that. Um, and reassess it. Yeah, sure we're going to retire, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah. From there, yes. you went into the corporate world. You didn't go straight into property. Well, actually, well, no, what happened was I was unemployed for a couple of months. Okay. Uh, about three months or something, which I lost yeah. all hope at the end of that. I was unemployed because when I left uni, although I had a great degree from mm -hmm. a good university, no one was employing. And those that were employing were employing on a free basis. Yeah. So I got offered two contracts with one of the biggest architects in Nottingham. Okay. Uh, but they wanted me to work free for a year. Come along, build up your CV, yeah, get some exactly. experience, um, and we won't pay you. Well, it was all, one was great, and I nearly did one. But they wanted me to pay for the travel, okay. so I would actually be out of pocket by going to work, which sounded crazy, yeah. so I didn't want to do that. So after that, after I was a, uh, an estate agent, I took a role as a, like a junior surveyor mm -hmm. uh, within a surveying practice, and I did my uh, like a, a domestic energy assessor part there as well, and these upgrades to, uh, to help me, uh, and I did costing and things like that, so we'd cost extensions, uh, new builds, just tiny jobs yeah. with costing. The like residential that. firm primarily. Exactly, yeah, okay. yeah. So it's only a really small one. Uh, they did renewables, they did tons of different things, but that's yeah. where I, I kind of focused uh, a lot of my energy on, on transferring what I'd learned at uni into surveying. Yeah. So that was the progression there from the estate agent. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I was about a year into that and one of the investors called me uh, and asked me whether I would like to be a sourcer full time for him. Okay. Uh, to push along because he's got a business that uh, build portfolios for people. Yeah. So uh, he, he got me to be a sourcer. That's what, that was what I've been doing for a long time and uh, I'm now branch manager of that. And obviously, there's yeah. some details you maybe don't want to share, but what does your role involve on a day-to-day -day basis? So uh, we have buyers that work in the East Midlands. Mm -hmm. They'll bring deals to me for me to have a look at. Yeah. I'll have a look at them and just analyze them and, and see if they're deals and then uh, you know ask, ask them whether ask them what offers they've put in yeah um, really just audit what they're doing I mean throughout your corporate life then between the state agency obviously your degree in architecture the surveying practice and now this yeah. you had this real wealth experience about how 
pretty much every aspect of the, the residential market worked from you know construction right through to you know, selling the end product. Yeah. So that must have stood you in really good stead. Yeah, I think so, yeah. When did you make the decision that you were going to start investing for yourself? So while I was at the, uh, the sourcing company, um, I always wanted to get into property, but it was just the lack of funds. You know, my, we didn't have a lot of money in the house and I, I, I couldn't borrow it from anyone. So it was more of I had to save it and then put it in. And obviously saving money, uh, when, you, you know, when you're 21, 22, it's pretty hard to do, yeah. especially to get into property. I mean, everyone else is going out getting drunk, and there's me saying I want to save, save and not go out. So that's, what, that's how I went in. I had a small amount of money, and um, I, I, I got in that way with a single lap. So we fixed that really cheaply. I think I spent about between eight and 10,000 pounds on it, um, and I got it revalued in, in six months' time for 95. Okay. So I ended up with something like 18,000 pounds in my pocket and a house. This one's been running now for four months. Um, it's fully tenanted as much as we could could tenant it. Uh, we spent seventy five thousand on it plus furnishings in the end, and we put, bought it for one two five. We've just got it revalued at two nine five uh, on a bespoke product with Shawbrook. Two. Okay, so you've and that's bricks and mortar again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, how were you able to buy it so cheap? Like, gen this is me genuinely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was one of the things. This was a this was one where. People underestimated what it was again on the market. It didn't. It it had sold, but then it dropped out twice, yeah. uh, and it was left on the market for a long time in a market that we, which was constantly moving. This is an area where the whole all of the prices are going up tremendously, um, and we seem to just hit it at the right time. Yeah, and I guess you've added real value to the sort Of course, yeah. We, yeah, we, we spent seventy five conversion on. Yeah, so we, we added square footage, which yeah. is, you know actual value to it. Yeah. Um, so we did do that as well. Um, we, we added three en suites to it. Uh, I think it cash flows. It will cash flow about fifteen hundred again when it's when it, you know after bills and everything with the bigger mortgage. Um, so that's where they, that's on a JV agreement. So we're gonna we're gonna half that. And is HMOs that you still focus on today? All right? of that's them are HMOs. Apart right? from that single like that, I still have. Yeah. What was it? I mean, so that would have been what maybe three years ago, four years ago. Yeah, that you got exactly. That one. Yeah. What was it? That, where where did that idea come from? It was cash flow. So prolific so. now, right? But four yeah. years ago, not as popular. No, it was for me. It was all about the cash flow, and it was all about the whole thing. You know, I, I wanted to, I wanted to put myself in a good position where I didn't have to work. I could choose to do what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and the HMOs provided that with the least amount of effort or the least amount of time. Yeah. Uh, so that was the the route I chose to go yeah. Yeah. So how many have you got under your belt now? Uh, the other thing, I think I've got 56. 56 rooms? 56 rooms that okay. are working, yeah. uh, or, or in the process of being renovated, yeah. uh, with a further 40 something in the pipe, I think. Uh, so 30 something. Close 30. to 100 rooms. Yeah, we're at 90, 92, hopefully. If, all, if everything goes through that we're in progression with now, yeah. then I'll be at 92, including one for the thing. Okay, so I mean that's really rapid growth in a yeah. pretty short space of time and given that you're working a full-time job as well, mm -hmm. that progression is phenomenal. So I mean, congratulations. Thank you. you must be pretty proud of that achievement, yeah? Um, or do you just feel like it's... I, I feel like I've not had time to really sit back and reflect on what I've done. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't... It's a weird one. I should be proud and I am proud, but I just, I don't know. It, it's, it's not sank in yet what I've done. Yeah. Probably because half of them aren't there, you know, because they're in refurb or whatever. Yeah, sure. I think that might be why. Okay. Um, so it's not really been a linear progression then. It's not been, you, you've really ramped things up in the past yes. sort of 12 or 18 months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And from a, a kind of um, an investing point of view, that sounds as though it's a lot of money that you need to go out and source. You're still only 27 years old. Yeah. You know, you're working a day job, which probably I'm assuming you're not like a banker getting a million pound bonuses <laughs> wish, every year. No. So, how have you been able to grow this portfolio so quickly? Uh, so, all of well, I say all, uh, most of my projects are JV uh, funded. Yeah, uh, and we'll do that through different JV structures. Uh, so, there's 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 some that are 50 50 splits. You know, the, the standard JV kind of. Uh, Deal, or, or we've got. One, I've got one where I have someone lend me money, uh, and in return I'll do them a turnkey service. So one for me, one for you, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the first one that I took you to, that one is one of those. So someone's okay. lent me that money yeah. to do that. Uh, I think they lent me that with SAS funds, uh, and then I, in return I'll either give them uh, a fixed return mm -hmm. or I'll give them uh, a deal in okay. replacement for that. But what was it that you think you had to change? How did you go about approaching people? Was it people within your network that you already yeah. knew, friends and family? That was a big thing for me. So I, I was always anti kind of networking and, and that kind of thing. And, and the whole putting myself in that education environment on Mastermind, that's what's changed it for me. Okay. Um, and obviously people have, seen the, people have seen that I've got this experience and they sometimes have come to me 
and ask me to do something with them. Yeah. Um, but other times I've just, the, the flipping mindset is that I'm not asking for money, I'm offering someone an opportunity to earn mm. just as much money as me. Yeah. Uh, often by not doing a, as much, you know, like armchair investing. Um, if, if I was, you know, fast forward 15 years down the line, I'd love to be in a position where I could lend people money yeah. uh, and not do much for, for that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that'd be a great thing to do. And also, uh, the, yeah, that's, that's where I'd, I'd love to be. So that's what I think the mindset thing for me has changed. Um, just that yeah. I'm not asking for money, I'm more offering those yeah. people yeah, something, something back for okay. it. We bought this one for 145. Uh, it was on the open market and it, it hadn't become saturated, but it was on for a bit longer than normal. Um, and we put the planning on it to convert it to an eight bedroom uh, ensuite HMO. Uh, the total spend on it will be about 95 plus furnishings, so probably 105 or something when we're all done. Uh, and the total GDV will be about 320 to 340. I'd like to see a 350, but that's more of a conservative kind of uh, figure. That's probably with the Shawbrooks as well on like a bespoke product. Um, it will cash flow probably between 2000 and 2000 and a half net. At the moment, how are you able to jug it, juggle it? Is it just working longer hours than most people will? And yeah, well, at the start it was. Mm -hmm. At the start it was, but I'd like to think that now I don't... The, the actual time that it takes to do it, like I said, I, I'll probably visit site once once a week yep. uh, and go through everything with the builders like once a week, so that irons that out. So that's are you doing your, so from the start of the process, are you doing your own sourcing and yeah. viewings? Yeah, okay. everything, yeah. So I'll do so you'll find that. the properties, you'll go and yeah. view them. Yeah, I'll yeah. do all the project management okay. as well. So yeah. And then once it gets through conveyancing, you go and pick up the keys. Yeah. You've got a, a team of builders, I presume, exactly, that are fairly yeah. trustworthy. They're integral to this. So that, the okay. whole thing about this management and about the time, mm -hmm. if I didn't have a good set of builders, then that would be, you know, that's where it is here. Yeah. Because um, although they don't, uh, well, although you could say that they don't necessarily project management manage it, they do sort a lot of the stuff out. You know, they mm -hmm. they've got their own electrician. You know, I'm not having different trades go in, and I'm not organising the different trades. I've yeah. got one builder that I deal with, and he does all of that. Okay. Um, so sometimes I'll do the orders and things, which, yeah, I might work a bit late to get them done. Yeah. But I like to think that I'm, I, I like to think that probably eight hours a week on top of my working so working week not, to not do a this. vast amount yeah of time. not a huge amount of time especially to the number of projects you're working yeah, on yeah exactly okay. but that's come from like, that's a progression it's taking from, you a while to get yeah there. exactly like okay. at the start you know I'm driving on my lunch break to let an electrician in or to yeah. open the door and, I mean key boxes have revolutionised that for me yeah. but you know doing things like that that really took up my time like, that killed me you know Saturday yeah. and Sunday I think um, about a year ago was the first time I, I had a Saturday and Sunday Okay. I just sat there and thinking, what am I supposed to do on Saturday and Sunday now? So I can actually do something. Yeah, I mean, you're up to, so what are you saying, 50 odd rooms 50 at the moment? Now. It's going to be double that effectively yeah. within See. the next 12 months. Yeah. Um, that's a big overhead as well. Are you managing these yourself? So I managed to farm these out. Uh, I got a cracking deal with a local letting agent. Mm -hmm. um, and he's absolutely fantastic. I couldn't do any of this without him. Yeah. At the start, I tried to do the whole thing, mm -hmm. manage it myself, and that really didn't go to plan. And I, was okay. finding, I was finding myself just spending so many hours viewing viewings yeah. and you know if you work out how many hours you actually spend doing viewings it's definitely not economical. Yeah, big time grind. Um, yeah definitely I mean that was you know I'd be doing viewings till 8 o'clock at night yeah. and go home and have to do my orders and stuff so yeah. um, no that changed the game for me when I when I uh, got this guy on board. Okay. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's not a one man band he's got a few people to help yeah. him but I like to use the term as one man band because yeah. he Everything that I give him affects. He's not a high street chain. Exactly. It's yeah. Important to him. Yeah. And, and that's exactly. a lot of units for him. Yeah, it is. It's a yeah. huge. I mean, that's you know, that's a good raise for him this yeah, year that he's true. got from that. Yeah. Uh, and and everything matters. So, I mean, he's done some fabulous things with me. Where he's he's offered to, well, just all kind of things. Offered to do some really good things. And I think that's just because I'm speaking with him directly. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've got a really good relationship. Um, so yeah, I, I couldn't have done it without him. Yeah. Definitely the power team thing that yeah, he's you know, for sure. one of them at the top. On the joint ventures, by the time you've given your give you partner 50%, you've mm -hmm. paid a letting agent, you're still happy with the returns that you're getting? Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the way that I look at it is, for every JV that I do, it's like an instant kind of pay rise I'm gonna get for, for quite some years. Yeah. Um, so I won't do a project unless it's worth 500 pounds to me. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the minimum. Yeah. But. Five hundred pounds is, is, is a good amount of money uh, to add to, yeah. to the bottom I mean, line. If most people were getting a five hundred pound pay, pay rise every six months or so, they'd be delighted, wouldn't they? Yeah, definitely. If yeah. you're doing all of these a year, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And so this one is a Victorian mid terrace in Derby. We picked it up for one four five, and we're going to be spending around about twenty k on it, including furnishings and fittings. It's a really cheap refurb. Um, we need to get it done on a budget, um, just because we spent a bit more on it as it, as it work, was a working HMO. 
Uh, we expect it to be worth between 190 and 200, uh, probably 119, 210, given as a 200 midpoint. Uh, I think cash flow wise, because it's a JV, we'll probably come out with just under a thousand pounds net at the end of the month. With the sourcing mm -hmm. for a lot of these projects, I mean, Nottingham is covered pretty exclusively by an Article 4 directive, yeah. which limits planning on new HMOs. Mm -hmm. How are you able to get so many properties within the city then? You're typically looking at existing HMOs. Well, yeah. in, in a lot of cases, what we've seen anyway, you've exactly, been buying yeah. existing HMOs, right? Yeah. So, um, we, well, the deal that we looked at earlier, that one's interesting because it was, it was, uh, it was published on quite a few sites and no one really saw what I saw in it mm -hmm. and also because of its location. Um, but I would like to think that I bought, that I made that deal by applying for the Article 4, the C4 document. Yeah. So, um, so there was that. So we can't, I'm kind of aiming it at tired landlords or um, old HMOs that need work. Yeah. I mean, having said that, stuff like that on right move is, is going through the roof. You know, there's like a bolted on price for the for the C4 straight yeah. away. So um, a lot of these are direct to vendor where they can be. Yeah. That's the only way we could secure a price like, like what we got. Yeah. Okay. And then what about your plans going forward? Is it more of the same, more HMOs? <laughs> Have you got a, a target that you want to hit with the number of units? Yeah. So I did. Well, I've got a like a diagram at home in mm -hmm. the office. Uh, that's a, it's kind of a circle diagram, and I the way I do my goals, so I'll set. I'll look at the the date in which I want to set them. So this was 2020. I wanted to get to 100 rooms, mm -hmm. and then work backwards to give me a natural progression on how to get to that point. Yeah. Uh, so I did that for 100 rooms and I've obviously nearly done that this year. So I, I really need to kind of look at that and reassess where I'm going. But uh, I don't want to make it too big where it's not manageable. Yeah. I want it to be something that can support me and uh, my, my partner going forward. Yeah. Okay. Have you got an idea of how many rooms that is? I mean, I guess the 100 The 100 was, was like the sweet point. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Um, the 100 was the, the point at which I thought that would be a, a, a big business. Yeah. Um, and with us having sort of 92, you know, in the pipe and stuff, that's that's pretty much achieved. So yeah. um, I'll kind of reassess that. I, the, the progression I want to go down, I want to I want to start doing developments and things mm -hmm. because of my background, yeah. and I really enjoy that part of things. So uh, I would like to kind of progress to that. So that's got to be there somewhere in the goals, I suppose. Yeah. In terms of uh, some of these projects, like you say, you, you saw things that other people didn't mm -hmm. see. You've been able to pick up some great deals. Do you think that's because you're investing? on your own patch, you know the area well, yeah. you know what works and what doesn't work. Is that something that you would recommend to other people to invest in their own area? Yeah, they should know it inside out. It's yeah. like, the way I see it is if, um, I don't know whether it's just me, but if I'm gonna buy a new car, if I'm gonna buy a new laptop or something, mm -hmm. I'll spend like weeks and weeks tirelessly looking at different things and yeah. I'll know it like the back of my hand. And that's the same kind of thing. So if you know, like that one in Beaster, mm -hmm. um, that came back on the market and it just sat there stale, it was on for, maybe six weeks Yeah. Um, after it, after a couple of sales had fell through it was on for such a long time um, and no one picked up on it yeah. and then we picked up on it and you know well, I, I, I saw it I knew it was there um, I knew what it was mm -hmm. so uh, yeah we picked up on it and went for it and obviously yeah. there was a big big uplift in that so it was definitely a deal yeah. uh, so this one's in Derby it's a 10 bedroom uh, mid terrace we picked it up for 205 uh, from a landlord letter and we spent 120,000 on the refurb I think there was about 20,000 of hidden costs within that, so the embodied costs with the refurb and the refinance and all that kind of thing, and the borrowing costs. Uh, so we got a refinance at 435, uh, which pretty much means we leave about 15K in the deal when it's all done. Uh, it nets, bear with me, it nets about two and a half thousand pounds a month. And we spoke a little bit about what your plans are for the future, but like I say, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a, a very exciting journey to watch. So if people are interested in what you've got going on just now, if they yes. wanna keep track of what you're up to in the future, where can they go? How can they get in touch with you? So um, I have a Facebook page, it's J uh, at JMI Holdings, and also an Instagram one there. Um, if, if you can't find those, then just add me on Facebook and we can have a chat. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for uh, coming on today. I say coming on. Thank you for sitting <laughs> you. in front of me. Um, it's been great for you to, to show us around. Uh, like I say, if you're listening to this as audio, if you're sitting in the car or wherever you might be listening to this, then when you get home, check out the YouTube channel because that will have some footage of Jonathan's current projects and some of the ones that he's just about to start working on. Uh, so it'll be great to see that. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, then head over to iTunes and Spotify and listen to the podcast where we've got the full interview with Jonathan. Uh, a lot of good tips and insights there, so thank you for sharing that. And uh, hopefully we get the chance to speak again soon. Definitely. Thanks a lot. Cool.